Just for a change, let's see you do something really heavy on your own. <laughs> To another Seller Circle YouTube video. We're back in Birmingham today, my hometown here at Safe Store. Uh, we're gonna have a look at my old storage unit. There's still a ton of stock in here that I haven't had a chance to shift since I've moved up to Manchester. So let's go inside and we'll have a look. Yeah, we'll have a quick look, scan some products, talk about what I'm talking about the unit, all stuff like that, and see what kind of level you can take Amazon FBA to. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy, Jason. Jesus. Decent in there though, mate, honestly. What we're gonna do is we're gonna scan a few of Jake's products. We're gonna talk about them. He's gonna talk some information about these products, why he's selling them, you know, all stuff like that. See what kind of profit Jake's working with in his old bloody unit. So this, uh, this is a secret product. This is actually, well, yeah, you can't film the label then. <laughs> this is a secret. Uh, 1,800 sales per month, uh, £4.56 to buy, £4.41 profit per unit. So 100% ROI. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. That's a good one, that. Have yeah. they always been at that price? They used to be selling at 22 quid these days. What's selling at the moment? 14. Oh. So you was making that 200% ROI before? At the time, yeah. Wow. How Because cool? it was a new listing, but it was just so popular. It was like, it's a multi-pack of multiple mm. different things that are put together, both from the same brand. Mad. So what's in there? Like, yeah. same item, but different sizes are like so, different. No, like, no, nah, three of... they make different products, don't they? I'm going to yeah. give myself away, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they make different products. They make different types of products. All the same type of product, but they can all be used together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got you, got you. But these are going to be sold, so keep that one secret that's a decent idea so yeah. did you just find that listing and then just yeah so with with wholesale a lot of things is that um if you can put stuff together as like a multi-pack sometimes you're they'll be very profitable whereas if you just sell something singularly i mean anyone can get like um i don't know like these bt phones for example anyone can get this in and sell it as a single pack you can literally get that in send it off as easy as that and mm. amazon will do that but what amazon often won't do is get two of them put them in a bag, put a label on it and sell it as a two pack. So a lot of the time, you know, no one's really gonna need two BT phones, but you know, people might need two rolls of tape. People might need- Yeah, 100%. Do you know what I mean? You it's don't want to order them individually. things that you might need two of, you can make money on. It's interesting, cause you're obviously gonna charge more than it would it be for like one. Yeah. Or is it so like when you're selling these multi packs, if you were to buy them all individually, well, would it have been cheaper? Because it depends. It really depends. Sometimes you get a better deal. You'll sell it for cheaper than per unit. So if you're selling mm. a two pack, the customer's getting a better deal per unit. Mm -hmm. But it's not that much bigger. So you're paying the Amazon fee anyway. Yeah. So it's more economical to have it as a two pack or a three pack especially if it doesn't make yeah. it too much bigger or too much heavier. The Amazon fee isn't going to double. Yeah. If you put two units in, it's only going to go up by a slight bit. But you're still charging almost double, if that makes sense. Mm, got you, so, got you, got you. Yeah. So with your Amazon fees, is it like is it like a fixed fee on there? Is most of the fee like a fixed fee to sell a product? Yeah. Rather it, than like it, a percentage? Each product is fixed, really. It depends on the category, the sort of percentage that it is. Each category is different, depends on the weight, size, etc. And they constantly sort of like reassess mm -hmm. them. As time goes on, fees generally slowly go up as well yeah. but that's just inflation i mean yeah. sale prices go up everything sort of moves up your cost to buy goes up so yeah 100%. you're sitting at the same profit overall it's just this changes then that changes this changes then that changes if that makes sense yeah so these ones were these super duper easy to get like was they just like in stock from a wholesaler uh, or was they bought oh. those ones that we just showed then direct from the brand oh okay. had a trade account with the brand for a long time now it wasn't easy to get Took what, a lot of work. Yeah, so how did you actually get that? Like, you know, why was it so hard to get that the trade account? Just because the they don't let you sell the stuff on Amazon. So okay. if you go to them and say, oh, I want to buy this and sell it on Amazon, they'll say no. Okay. And a lot of the time, if you go to it and say, I want to sell this on my own website, I want to sell this in my own shop, they'll say no. They only deal with like the big dogs. Mad. So there's various different routes and things that you've got to go through to get there, if that makes sense. Yeah. And what was like the minimum order quantity? It was like a minimum spend. Uh, it's like a grand much. with these. Really? It's not okay, so it's not too bad. It's like considering bad, yeah. it's a really I've, big brand. There's some that are way more. There's some like eight, ten k ones that I have. Yeah. yeah. 
Wow. That you have to just be more cautious of when you're placing an order. Really. Yeah. And did you? So with these ones, did you do a test order or did you just wing it? Um, well, not wing it. You obviously no, because it. it was a grand minimum yeah. order. So I was like already invested. I probably did about one thousand five hundred pounds, something mm -hmm. like that. It was a long time ago that I started selling this. It used to pop off like really well, but they must have started giving trade accounts out to yeah. more people, sort of willy nilly, so it doesn't sell as well anymore. But at the time, it did well. With wholesale, you won't. Some things you'll sell for a month, some things you'll sell for like a year. It just really depends on competition, prices, fees may go up. Depends on a lot of things. So I remember back in the day, I got a ton of cake boxes delivered. It was like three pallets worth. And they, they were here and they were like so tall, I couldn't even fit them through the, uh, through the door. We'll pop up a uh, photo. <laughs> Fun fact for you, this right here is what we call a Euro pallet, so that's 80 centimetres by 120 centimetres. You can't send one of those into Amazon, you've got really? to send a normal size pallet. So the one on the bottom is a normal size, so it's an 100 by 120. That's what you're allowed to send in, normal size pallet, no Euros. What are some other bangers we've got in here then, Jacob? Well, from the last video, mm -hmm. I'll show you actually. Oh, this is a quality story. I told the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In yeah. The film. But so we filmed a video yesterday that will already be out now. So go back and watch it if you haven't seen it. But this is one of my worst products, but I still made money on it. Mm. I made something like three grand on these. But it's obviously these. something that you can't really do. Yeah. Should we put one up? Yeah. Got another one. Look at this, boys. No, you don't this is fantastic. Do you doing it wrong there? Nah, whatever. <laughs> Fucking right here. <laughs> so, what was the deal with these? <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, these were like a private label product that I brought. Mm -hmm. So I didn't realize at the time that they were private label. So what private label is, it's basically someone's brought these over from China. Mm -hmm. They've put a brand name on there. So they've called these Jake's Listed, yeah. Jake's Aprons for Christmas. Yeah. And then only I can sell on here because I've trademarked it. I've done Amazon brand approval, stuff like that. Um, so no one else can sort of sell on here. It's just, it's just the owner. But at the time I never realized. So I brought, you know, tons of these. I think about 250 of these yeah. from China. It was this, and again, I put it in a two pack. So it was this and another one. Again, people like multiples two packs mm -hmm. um, and then sold them near Christmas. But what would they were sending me messages, trying to get me off the listing, threatening messages in like half spoken English, all sorts oh of nightmare. But I managed to sell them in the end and still made like a couple of grand on them. Did you get a strike on your account from there? Uh, no, I didn't because I managed to take it off. Nice. Jake's top tips of getting rid of. Bad complaints, strikes. Jake knows all the. Can get rid of it all. It's not mm. a problem. Oh. <laughs> anyway, Shit, anyway. <laughs> so how? But the thing is, how did you? How would you avoid? Well, obviously, I know you teach us in the wholesale mentorship how to avoid private label listings and things like that. But how would you avoid it? In a quick summary, how would you avoid a private label listing? So when you're looking, when you're looking at a private label listing or looking at a listing that you think might be private label, you want to stay away from it if. The brand name, so it's going to have what's called a brand name. So obviously this is Fujifilm. So if I was to go to China and make some film cameras, I'm going to call it, I don't know, Wujifilm instead. So Wujifilm is going to be on the packaging. It's most likely going to be in the title. And then a lot of the time it will actually be in the seller, uh, the seller store front name as well. So the mm -hmm. seller's actual name on Amazon will often be the same as the brand that they're selling. Won't always happen, but a lot of the time it will. That yeah. means that it's usually going to be private label. Now, sometimes the seller will have a different name, different to the actual brand, but they can still be private label. So you've got to do things like trademark checks, yeah. see what other brands the seller's selling. So if they're selling, you know, multiple of this particular product, this particular brand, mm -hmm. and you go on the other brand products and they're all sold by just that one seller, then it's most likely private label. It's a lot to tell and it's hard to get your head around. It takes time, mm -hmm. but we check the products for you in Seller Circle. We can basically do a private label check, make sure you're not selling on private label listings. Mm, which is something you definitely want to avoid because you know you can face legal action if you can yeah. sell it. You'll get booted off the listing and then you're going to be stuck your with Amazon a bunch of products. will be fried. <laughs> you don't want to mess with it. Trust me, I've been there and it's stress. When you've got like 20, 30K sitting in your Amazon account and then you get an email through saying, your account's been uh, like temporary locked because of this, Shit. because of that, because of something that you know you've actually done, yeah. like sold on a private level. It's it's not fun. No, it's I can not imagine. Fun at all. And not fun at all. could they possibly like take away all your cash and stuff like that? Well, I suppose they probably would pay out your balance. But... So they'll hold it for like six months. 
So if you can't get stoned, they'll hold it for six months. Jesus. So Harry, support staff, I'm sure he won't mind uh, me telling this story. He had about 60k in his Amazon balance, mm. yeah, and he, he changed his card. Mm-hmm. But he didn't. But he didn't put like his name incorrectly. Like he didn't put his middle name or something. The slight discrepancy like that locked his account. And he called me. I remember I was here, and he called me. He was like fretting down the road, <laughs> thinking, "What am I going to do? I got 60k tied up in Amazon." And it turned out like he could he could go through and contact seller support, and they actually helped yeah. him. Usually they're shocking and they won't help you. The Amazon seller support is terrible, absolutely terrible. They'll always favour the customer. They have not got time for the sellers, yeah. even though they make you know tons of money off them. But he managed to get it fixed and uh, he's still got the same account now. That's why it's always best to you know learn from someone who really knows what they're doing, exactly. so you can um, avoid all these problems. You know you don't have to be flapping about 30k locked in your account. You don't want to be selling on private labels. You don't, want to, be doing you don't that. want to be getting letters through your door and stuff like that. So that's why it's crucial to get the right education and learn all even though these are basically basics it's basics but you would have never thought of that would you it's like i always think do you know the dual account thing so Mm -hmm. you asked me once when we get when we were getting started oh can i get a second account to do this i was like no and you were like what do you mean why can't you get a second account i mean you can have as many email addresses as you like but if you get a second amazon account without sort of getting approval for it which is very hard to get and even once you get approval for it, Amazon to actually validate that when they deactivate yeah. your account, you show them the approval they've given you. A lot of the time they won't even accept it. You need to be approved to do it. If not, and you open a second account, they'll just delete both of them, temporarily lock them, lock them forever. You won't get them back and you'll be out of your money for like six months. And if you've got credit cards, business yeah. loans, staff to pay, it's not a situation 100%. you can be getting yourself into. So you've got to be cautious of it. You may as well start right off the bat with good practices, I think. And treat your Amazon account like a baby, that's what I say. Have you ever sold products as big as this before? Or is this uh, the biggest product you've sold? Probably roughly the biggest. I wouldn't usually go for oversized stuff, usually. Just not my game. I'd mm. rather send in a box about this size with like Got hundreds of products. Hundreds of products in it. Yeah. Much easier. Hundred um, percent. Could you send these to FBA, or would you have to do it as FBA? No, no, you send these FBA. Yeah, yeah. I sent. So I had three pallets worth of these. Exactly. Yeah. When they come <laughs> three pallets worth, so it was it was thousands. Um, but yeah, just need to send the rest of them off. They sell like wildfire, which is why I'm not too worried about mm-hmm. sending them off because I know the price isn't going to come down. Flymo is such a huge brand. The prices are going to go up, if anything, because things yeah. are getting more expensive. So, so thoughts about these? So I bought these from a very, very special supplier. I can't really <laughs> say where, because everyone will go and buy them as well. But I bought these for 69.99. Really? So put that yeah, in yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's what everyone said, and I told them about this deal. But you can't just go out and get deals like this. It doesn't happen. You've got to get those connections over time, and mm-hmm. you've got to sometimes be in the right place, right time as well. So, it's just learning. at sixty-nine pounds at the moment, you would be making a hundred and thirteen pound profit per one you sell, and they're selling at one hundred and seventy-six times a month at the moment, and it's a hundred and sixty-four percent ROI. So I got twenty-two on that pallet. Work that out. How much? Is, mm, how much 20. profit am I sitting on there? 2.6k profit. And on I sent pallet. two pallets off already. Really? Have you, did they already sell? Mm-hmm. Wow. They sold like wildfire. They went so quickly. They used to sell more because it's winter now. Yeah. They always mind their lawns, aren't they? Mm-hmm. But in, in summer, which I started selling these at the very start of summer, they were selling like crazy. And they were selling for more. They were definitely selling for more back then as well. Mm. They were selling them for like 270 odd. Yeah. It's, it's interesting you say that because. The sales rank at the moment is 7,000, right? Mm-hmm. But in summer, the sales rank was around 300. 132 was the lowest sales rank. So that would have been 132 selling. is low. So low. What, what we're talking about there is BSR, so best seller rank. The higher that is, if that's in like the 100,000 or the tens of thousand, the product isn't going to be selling that often. But if it's, you know, below 10,000, below 5,000, in the hundreds, I've sold stuff in the tens really? before. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, in the tens. Uh, it wasn't in the tens for long, but it was in the tens. And it's like 300 sales a day at that point. Uh, it depends on category as well. Yeah. But BSR is like relative as certain stuff stops selling as much, stuff starts mm-hmm. selling more, all within that category. It's all relative sort of the ranking system in there. So just pulled up my jungle scout here. As you can see, we're looking at um, this Flymo um, that we we're just talking about there. As you can see back here, in uh, August, 
and you see it's selling 1202 times a month obviously now it's trailed off and it's selling less per month because it's christmas so you'll find that with a lot of seasonal goods obviously these other spikes here you've got july 2020 march 2021 was that covid times yep so everyone wanted to look after their garden so 2800 sales per month there august 2021 3100 sales per month um, and then it properly dips off in in winter where you're super super low and the same after sort of covid 400 400 it just Very depends interesting. yeah so obviously you've got to be cautious some things you won't realize are sort of seasonal products like obviously this is very seasonal but maybe no, most people would go ahead and order these in sort of autumn and think mm -hmm. oh it's a lawnmower everyone buys lawnmower yeah. but in reality there's so much you know no one buys them in winter compared to summer yeah. so you've got to be very careful with your risk how much you're ordering where you're ordering from and how much you're paying for it ideally as well because when sales go down you'll usually see prices go down people get scared they want to get rid of their stock at the same time at 269 back in july when it was selling the most as yeah, well yeah so it was coming up in price obviously there's been some lows when it's been like 169 170 but for the majority of the time it's been selling like very very high so we were just on about there so basically this product that jake was selling and like color of the packaging has changed so i was just asking jake whether you know it matters whether you're selling a product um and you know the packaging changes and stuff like that will they create a new listing but basically jake said that it doesn't matter as long as as long as what's inside is like the same product so like what, what he was saying about the cameras if the camera the color of the camera on the inside of this was like red but then they changed it to blue people are going to be buying the product for the color of the camera yeah so that's when it matters whereas if they just change the color of the packaging to like purple no one's going to care because it's still the same camera inside you're buying it for the camera not the packaging so it de it really does depend it's not an ideal situation to be in either way but you've just got to speak to your manufacturer see if they can get you any of the remaining yellow ones before mm -hmm. it changes or whatever you want to do you just got to be cautious with it again it's just one of the many things yeah, you're selling on amazon there's a lot of money to be made but you've got to be cautious about things yeah. like that color yeah. changes photo changes etc so this is the product don't show the product something that you want to look yeah. for i mean that that product you can't sell what it was because there's boxes and boxes and boxes of it over there and um, that still need to be got, gotten rid of and they still make money so i'll be buying more of them there is more of them coming in fact um but that sort of product you want to look for something that's consistent that has consistent price if it's up here then down there and you can make money up here but not down there and then you don't know where it's going to be going if it's all choppy sellers here there and everywhere not a product you want to get involved with usually unless you can sort of buy small amounts mm -hmm. and afford to hold product in there until it goes back up and clear your stock but even then like you're going to have sleepless nights at that point you want the products that are going to sit there they may not sell thousands of times a month that product only sells you know 600 yeah, times a... some of them I'll, I'll sell products that sell 300 times a month that's fine even if they sell 100 times a mm -hmm. month they make three four pound every time they sell three four five hundred quid times find ten of those Three, four, five grand a month. Yeah, I suppose it's have about having you know a bunch of different products mm -hmm. and stuff like that. On average, how many like products would you sell in at once? On average, I'd usually have about fifty to sixty products in stock when yeah. everything's churning. Yes, obviously at the minute it's brought down a bit because of this move to Manchester, and it's <laughs> I thought it'd be very simple to sort of move a business mm -hmm. up there, but yeah. it's really not. Again, it's still a learning curve. I've never moved a business before. Now I know to do a lot more prep before you even yeah, choose to move a business. If you are buying stuff at good prices, you know a couple of people who not only do Amazon FBA, but they also supply to like mm -hmm. local stores and stuff like that. You manage to strike deals there. And at the end of the day, it's you hard. If, you, if you're getting prices for FBA, you're getting the very best prices. You're not just going straight to a wholesaler. You're going you know, direct to the brand a lot of the time. So if you can go direct to the brand, you can get it very cheap. A lot of the time cheaper than smaller independent stores will be able to get it for. So if you go to there and say, oh, you, you know, I've got this, they'll buy from you rather than yes they won't do the volume they'll do on amazon mm -hmm. but if you get 20, 20 small independent stores it's another branch of your business 100 and can scale into something you know where you're not affected by amazon fees you're direct to your customer yes it's not direct to the customer but direct to your customer mm -hmm. business to business transactions i suppose it opens up a lot of doors for you and stuff like that as well yeah. diversification in in your business at the end of the day which you can never say no to really mm. you know what like come when it comes to like, economies of scale and stuff like that how does that work so you know when you're buying from a supplier do they basically tell you like you know it's this price at 250 units this price at a thousand units this price at 2000 units how does that work it completely depends on the supplier some suppliers will say you've got to spend 5k to get 10 percent off 6k to get 20 percent off 
things like that. They're called price brackets. Mm -hmm. Some suppliers will be like, you've got to buy a pallet's worth to do it at X price. You've got to buy two pallets worth. Some will do it on number of units. Some won't do any discount at all. If I buy one or I buy 10,000, it's the same price. Some, it's just depends on the situation, depends how much you know the trade account yeah. manager. That's a lot of the time, they'll come back to you with a price. Yeah. And it's like, oh, can you actually do it for this price? If they like you, yes. If they don't and they don't think you're going to continue buying and you've not got, you know, uh, you know, a business that's going to continue buying from them for a while, they're not going to bother. Mm -hmm. But so it all depends how you're speaking to them. You know, we have email templates, different ways that we can speak to them, build relationships with them. There's all sorts of little things you can do to get that extra edge. So even if you're making money, I'll still ask for more money off. Yeah, 100%. because it's money back in my pocket. Yeah, it's either that or you know, it's just more of a cost of good. Yeah, not so only. Won't you? Yeah, not only is it more profit at the end of the day it's more leeway for the price to change and stuff mm -hmm. like that it's more protection yes yeah, more protection safer. you'll sleep better at night at the end of the day <laughs> because you're uh, you've got more margin in there if you're getting stuff for cheaper so you, you'd be crazy not to do it really when you know when you're actually doing amazon and stuff like that you know when when did you actually buy your first pallet how far in was that <sighs> first pallet oh god you're testing me now um it would have been like a couple of months in you, people don't realize people think you'll get a pallet like right like that with wholesale but there's a lot of stock on a pallet you're paying thousands for a pallet in fact it would have been the salt lamps you know really? it would have been the salt lamps that are in the last video yeah so i had a pallet of salt lamps because they were so heavy yeah so they're so big obviously to fit like you know 50 of them on a pallet is like half a pallet it's only 50 units and it's half a pallet but they're yeah. so big and they're so heavy you have no choice but to send them on a pallet really mm. uh, if you sent them in individual boxes it'd be ridiculously expensive and it's like yeah. a high restriction to pallets like when you're doing them not so as you'll see from that photo that we were outside yeah. they were ridiculous like they were way too high yeah. probably like unsafe but when you're sending stuff into amazon that is you like i said when we're coming in got to send a normal size pallet so it's got to be one meter by 1.2 meter it also can't be anything higher than 180 centimeters floor to the top of the pallet including the pallet as well if you send anything more than that then you'll get marks yeah. on your account you won't get your pallet accepted also if you don't send over if you send over 500 kilograms now i've done it before and nothing's happened to me they seem to be more stringent on height than they are weight sometimes like with those salt lamps it's quite hard to you, if you fit a pallet, like it's gonna be like a ton or more than a ton, so even yeah, because they were really, really heavy. Yeah, yeah, they were like five kilograms each. Yeah, yeah. So uh, what they mean? about five kilograms each. Yeah. So it just depends. You've got to be cautious with it. Like I said, treat your Amazon account with a baby. The rules are in place. The weight rules, the height rules, all the rules are in place for a reason. Don't break them because it will come back and it will bite you. You don't want money stuck in there. You don't want to mess with Amazon because they don't play nice. Yeah. They don't care about your 30 grand sitting in there. Nah, That's no way. chimp change them. They'll make that in a millisecond. They <laughs> don't care. Yeah, literally. Um, and and they, they, they just won't get it. They won't open it up or they'll make it very hard for you to get your account back. So treat it well. 100% that's one of the piece day of advice, uh, even if you're doing 100k a month realistically amazon do not care about your 100k a month you could be doing a million pounds a year no, are... they'll probably start caring mm. when you do about a million a month yeah they, <laughs> <laughs> you have a million a month even something. then you won't get like a um, you're dropping the ocean like an account manager or anything yeah. like that you won't get like a dedicated one is that I mean? possible to get a dedicated account manager if you're doing silly numbers yeah yeah but not at my level I'm still a small fish in the sea in the grand scheme of things compared to like huge businesses. The, the people who are doing serious numbers on Amazon are, um, you know, businesses that go on there. So like Morrison's is now on yeah. Amazon. So, you know, Morrison's think how many lines have stopped there. They've got, they've got like 10,000 plus lines. They must cheat. Each one sells, you know, two, three, four times a day. You're doing a hundred K orders a day. So I say I was doing like 50, 60 products at like height at maximum when I'm at full. Um, you know, think about that 10,000. Yeah. Think how many products Amazon have? They'll have hundreds of thousands of products. It's ridiculous. It'd be mad to know how much is in a warehouse, like in a fulfillment center. When they open back up, we'll have to go yeah, to the fulfillment need, center tour. You can't time. do you can't film it, so we'll have to take like those little spy glasses or mm, something. You like can that. do virtual ones. Maybe yeah. we should do a virtual one yeah, for yeah, a video. Well, yeah, 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 Me and you sure. should react <laughs> to a virtual fulfillment yeah. center tour because you can book in and someone walks around with you. That's mad. And and you'll have someone filming it and there'll be like a an associate That's walking crazy. around and you'll have loads of people just watching on Zoom. So That's we should mad. do it and we yeah, should we should react to it because they're huge i'd love yeah. to see inside one well, yeah know, me and so harry were going to go to one before covid but then covid came you can't they stopped you going in there 
Um, but yeah, I bet that's a, I bet that's a sourcing method where they go in there, see what products are in there. 100% trying to scan a couple of barcodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scan some barcodes in there. Some barcodes. <laughs> So guys, we actually forgot to film an outro for this video. So here we are, here's the outro. Thank you for watching. Make sure to stick around for our next video. You're gonna enjoy it very, very much. Make sure to drop a like and a comment as well on this video. We'll be doing another giveaway next week. Appreciate your time guys, and I'll catch you all very, very soon.